Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on today's Everything Music. It's the top 20 electric guitar intros of all time. Now, last week I did the top 20 acoustic guitar intros and I talked about how these intros should have some type of signature. Now, most of these intros are actually just the guitar by itself or the guitar maybe with one other instrument. In a couple instances, the vocals actually start the song and then the main guitar riff or intro part comes in. Coming in at number 20 is a song released in 1981 and was the subject of one of my recent What Makes This Song Greats. <laughs> Track number 19 was released in 1965 as part of a double A-side single with We Can Work It Out. Check it out. <laughs> Coming in at number 18 is one of the biggest classic rock riffs of the 1970s. As a matter of fact, this particular band, many people thought I should have included a different song on my top 20 acoustic guitar intro video. So here it is. <laughs> Intro number 17 is from a 1960s power trio where the lead guitarist went on to write another one of the upcoming greatest intros. Let's check it out. <laughs> Coming in at number 16 is a song that uses this as part of its sound. It happens to be one of the hardest ones to play on here too. we have a band that I've never actually featured on this channel. I've been asked a lot about when I'm going to do a What Makes This Song Great about this particular song. So I thought this would be a great place to first introduce it. Let's check it out. <laughs> Song number 14 was written by someone who I've interviewed on my channel and is one of my favorite guitarist songwriters ever. The song in particular, I've also featured on another video called The Art of Soloing, Episode 1. Let's check it out. <laughs> Coming in at 13 is from the debut record Van Halen 1, which came out in 1978. Now, which song is it? Well, it's one of the hardest ones to play on the record. Let's check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Number 12 is from a notorious YouTube blocker. I can't say the name of the band, nor can I play the riff or they will take down this video. I know it's ridiculous. It's actually stupid, but they deserve to be on this list. This is all I can play of it. <music> Intro number 11 is actually in drop D and the chord sequence in it is the most complex on the entire list. It's also one of my favorites to play. Let's check it out. Intro number 10 is from another band that I featured on a What Makes This Song Great episode. This, I think, many of you will agree needs to be on this list, although you probably are going to say that I should have picked a different song that I've also featured on What Makes This Song Great by the same band. Let's check it out. Intro number nine is from a southern rock band that is a staple of classic rock radio. You will hear this song all the time on the radio still to this day, and it was written in the early 70s. Let's check it out. <laughs> Song number eight was one of the first songs that people of my generation learned on the guitar. It was really Stairway to Heaven before Stairway to Heaven. So when you went into music stores, people said, don't play that song. But it needs to be on this list. Let's check it out. <laughs> Coming in at number seven is a song that's been on classic rock radio since the 70s and is associated with one of the greatest SNL skits ever. <laughs> Song number six is from a band that had so many different riffs, I could have picked a bunch of them. As a matter of fact, I have an honorable mention list that I have another song from them. But this is one of my favorite bands of the 60s and 70s. Let's check it out. Two, three, four. <laughs> Intro number five really could have been any one of the top five. It could be number one. It's actually the first riff that I ever learned on electric guitar. And I'm playing this particular guitar because I had this guitar built to look like his guitar. Let's check it out. Song number four is from a band that could fill up this entire list with intros. It was really hard to pick out what song to do. I actually had about five of them on my list when I began, but I, I kind of narrowed it down to this one because this, I think, is a perfect rock guitar intro. Let's check it out.
Coming in at number three, once again, is a band that I had about five songs on my list to put in. You can probably tell what it's going to be, or at least the band from the guitar that I chose to hold right now. Let's check it out. <laughs> Coming in at number two is a song that, when I started making the list, was the first one I thought of. And one of the reasons that I thought of it is because I named one of my kids after it. Here it is. Okay, before we get to song number one, I have some honorable mentions that I want to go through. Now, these are songs that made my original list, and really any of them could have been on here. And there are probably many of them are ones that you've thought of or have been jotting down all along. Why didn't he put this one in? Why didn't he put this one in? Let's check them out. Okay, so this next band belongs on the list with this song for sure. But since they're blockers, if I play this or say the band's name, they'll take the video down. But it goes kind of like this. You get the idea. Okay, here we are at number one. This is my pick for the greatest electric guitar intro of all time. As a matter of fact, it's made up of multiple guitar parts. But it's the shortest intro on the list. In fact, it's only one chord, but it's a chord that people have been trying to decipher for years. Here it is. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a new subscriber, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book or anything in my store, t-shirts, mugs, that's how I support this channel. Go to my website at www.rickbeata.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeata1. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.